Welcome to video blog two in my series on solar battery technology. We're going to talk about technology today, the different types of battery and what type of battery may suit your situation. There are a lot of battery technologies out there as we've already talked about. Today I'm going to talk about the most common three. So let's start with lithium. There's been so much talk about lithium batteries. And let's face it, Elon Musk and his Tesla car and his Tesla Powerwall and the other players in the market have really done a great job of marketing the lithium battery. Now, what I want people to be aware of, I think it's very important to understand there are different types of lithium. There is lithium iron, which is the most common, and this is what you'll find in like the Powerwall and the LG Chem and quite a lot of the batteries on the market are lithium iron. And then there's lithium iron, I-R-O-N, commonly called lithium ferrophosphate. And that's what they call the safe lithium. Now, if you go to my website, there's quite a good presentation on the website, which uh, covers the difference between lithium iron and lithium ferrophosphate. If you've been following the news in the last year or two, you'll be well aware of things like the Samsung Note 8, banned from being taken on planes. You would have heard of the hoverboards bursting in the flames on the side of the road. If you go to YouTube and just look up lithium iron battery fires, you'll scare the pants off yourself. Everything that's got lithium iron batteries in it, at some point one has exploded. And I truly don't believe that lithium iron home batteries are going to be any different. My great fear is that somewhere in the Western world, in the next little while, lithium iron as a battery technology in the home, somewhere it's going to go bad and a home's going to burn down. Now, what you have to understand about lithium iron is at this stage, the fire department does not have the capacity to put that fire out. If your lithium iron battery explodes into flames and starts to burn your house down, they'll hose your neighbours' houses down so that they don't burn as well and they'll have to stand and watch it burn because lithium iron is a totally unstable technology. So this is my fear, is that someone's house will burn down. And what are the repercussions on you, you might ask? When a house burns down, it could be from a faulty battery, it could be from a faulty installation, it could be as silly as the homeowner coming home, driving into the battery in their car and causing it to catch fire. But the repercussions, as I fear them, and as we're hearing in the industry, is what's gonna to happen to the cost of your home insurance? The minute that somewhere a house has a fire due to a lithium ion solar battery, the insurance companies are going to be all over that and your insurance premiums are going to go through the roof. So any savings you might make on energy, any benefits you've got from your solar storage could be undone through an incredibly increased insurance premium. That's one fear I have. Not alone, you don't want your house to burn down. But you know that would not be a good outcome. So lithium iron, not so good. Lithium ferrophosphate, however, is called the safe lithium. So there are options with lithium ferrophosphate and there's plenty of information on our website and online about the safe lithium. Lithium iron, lithium ferrophosphate, is not subject to the thermal meltdown potential of lithium iron. It's not likely to explode into flames and burn your house down. That's why it's commonly referred to as the safe lithium. So when you look on our website, when you look at the options we present you with for your home solar storage, we are specialising in lithium ferrophosphate and in other safe technologies. So that's the lithium story. There's a lot more to know, again on the website or go to Uncle Google and find out about that. The next technology that I want to touch on is lead carbon. Lead carbon technology is something that's come about over the last two to three years and is largely used in large scale off-grid solar power systems. Now, lead carbon, one of the toughest battery systems out there for a pure off-grid living. When we put in our large off-grid systems, as you see behind me here, that run an entire home, or even in one instance, we're running a government department a complete government department for Auckland City Council on an off-grid system, we use lead carbon batteries. Now, the lead carbon battery is really an innovation on lead battery technology. And we all know lead batteries, they've been around forever. They're a tried and proven battery technology. But lead carbon takes things one step further. 
With the lead carbon battery, the manufacturers introduce another aspect to traditional lead batteries. So they introduce a carbon sheet into the battery on the negative side of the plate. Now this is all a bit technical. What it does is it provides what they call a super capacitor uh, equivalent capacity to the battery. Now that all sounds like a lot of jargon, but what it means in real life is that lead carbon batteries that we power all of these homes around the country with, they perform very much like a lithium ion battery in as much as they'll pick up a charge very quickly, they'll hold that charge at any state of charge and they'll go to a deep discharge. These batteries can discharge down to 80 or 90 percent without harming the battery and that's previously been unheard of in lead type batteries. So again, if you relate to the life of a battery and the cycles of a battery, and batteries are all run in cycles, how many times can I drain this battery fully? You'll see that an AGM battery at 1550 cycles, a tubular gel battery at 5500 cycles, or going to a lead carbon battery, potentially 7000 cycles. So that's 7000 times that your battery can go down to its discharge level and be recharged again. That's a 20 year design life. So lead carbon is safe. It performs nearly as well as lithium in its discharge and recharge rates. It doesn't have any capacity to explode or burn your house down. It has a massive ability to give you a lot of energy back from your battery bank. We have lead carbon battery banks that are feeding three phase businesses 50 to 60 amps of power. Now, for the layman, that doesn't mean much. But when it comes down to which battery technology you choose, we can talk to you about it, we can advise you on your specific needs, whether it's lithium ferrophosphate, whether it's lead carbon, or some of the other batteries that will be introduced over time. But these technologies, one of them will definitely suit you, and there's aspects that I'll touch on next as we come back to talk about the uses of your battery bank, an emergency power supply, and a whole home UPS. We'll see you soon and talk about that.